before the invasion, Putin was saying that uh, Russian tanks will be on the streets of Kyiv in just several days. Well, here is the main uh, street in Kyiv, Krishatik, and here are Russian tanks, thermobaric weapons, all other heavy Russian military equipment burned and destroyed by Ukrainian armed forces. And thousands of people in Kyiv are now here making selfies uh, in front of the destroyed Russian military vehicles. And this is what is Russian war machine humiliated and destroyed here in Kyiv on the eve of Ukraine Independence Day. Because this is the nation which will not surrender. This is the nation which is fighting and resisting. And Ukrainians will win in this war because this is the country of free and independent people. Slava Ukraini! In Kyiv, security expert Maria Ardiva shows an obliterated Russian tank. Then... <laughs> Ardiva took in Donetsk versus Kharkiv. However, <laughs> when Lviv took on Kharkiv, air raid sirens went off. This is their new normal. The match between these two sides would be halted in all four times. Buckaroo Banzai would post this picture of one team awaiting clearance to return to the pitch. The war in Ukraine, even if there is limited coverage in the States, continues. This week marked the first matches for Ukraine's league domestically, of course, since the invasion, the illegal invasion by the Russians in late February. As we know, matches are scheduled 90 minutes. However, because of the alerts, pauses, then resuming a play, Kharkiv leave took four hours and 27 minutes to complete. Luckily, CNN reported this was the lone match to be affected, halted, and have sirens go off. In an email to CNN, the UPL said, safe and security measures is the main priority for us. So both teams had to go to the shelter every time according to the available safety protocols. The overall time of the match was indeed four and a half hours. In Donetsk's nil-nil draw against Kharkiv, Shakhtar manager Taras Stepanenko told the PA news agency, for 90 minutes, I forgot about the war. After the first half, I sat in the locker room and thought, we have already played 45 minutes. Very nice. I didn't hear the alarm in the city. For 90 minutes, I turned off and just enjoyed playing football. Very good emotions, very warm emotions, and I feel proud because of that. Here's a wrinkle to some of the security measures they're taking. The game was played behind closed doors with the clubs allowed to advertise the kickoff time, but on military instructions, not the venue in advance, and the players, staff, and officials all had access to air raid shelters in the event that sirens sounded. A spokesperson for the league said, sports competitions during the war become, among other things, a demonstration of our fearlessness, our confidence in the victory, and our readiness to continue the fight. As for the reason these matches take place behind closed doors with empty stadiums, Ukraine remains under martial law and large public gatherings have been banned in the capital ahead of Independence Day holiday, which was on Wednesday, due to fears of potential Russian bombardment. For Donetsk, it is eerily similar conditions that they have had in the past. Shakhtar have become accustomed to 
adversity, having been forced to move from their home in the Donbas region by Russian military action in 2014 before the COVID-19 pandemic took its toll. Although their resilience has given them confidence, they can ride out whatever storm comes their way. At the time, they relocated to leave for three years. Kharkiv for three years, then Kiev. It feels as though this has become customary. And league-wide protocol goes as follows. During air raids, matches will be stopped. Football players, coaches, and the entire staff must quickly go to the shelter. The presence of representatives of local military administrations, medical teams, and the state emergency service is mandatory. 